everybody. <laughs> I'm Daisy, I doodle, and today um, I'm going to be working on a piece that I had been working on for a while, but, you know, sometimes things get in the way. Um, she's based on an old character of mine, and um, the, the end goal is going to be to rig her in live 2D, <laughs> but honestly, I might be working two or three hours today, um, on her, uh, any longer than that, and I don't know how well I'm gonna hold up. <laughs> um, so, without any further ado, um, so this is, um, Put down my arms. This is what she uh, currently looks like. You might recognize her from my Twitter if you follow me on there. Um, in the video I did showing off my fancy drawn arm. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you look at the side here, um, she's mostly already separated out because um, I tend to separate rigs out as I draw them. I think some people like draw them and then separate them out, but that that seems like an extra step to me. It seems uh weird, right? I don't know. If you do it that way, more power to you. Um but yeah, basically when last I left off I was just going through adding a bunch of her uh, hair in. So, probably what I'm going to do is hide a bunch of her stuff. So I can see what the heck it is I'm doing. Um, and then just hunker down and get into it. Uh,. This is the first time I've done, like, a pure art stream. I haven't really done a lot of these, so... Uh, whatever, whatever it is other people do on them, I have no idea. I just figured I'd doodle, maybe ramble a bit. Um... Show off some of my art process, which I wouldn't say is the best. But it's something. Boy. Okay. Um. I do rotate my canvas a lot. I'm sorry if that, that makes you a little nauseous. Um. But. It, it really helps smooth out the lines. And if you're unsure where that is in Clip Studio, it's just right down here. These little arrows you can use. The bar is what <laughs> really gets it twirling, and then this little point here is the reset. Um, but you might already know that. Yeah, she, she has a lot of hair. <laughs> and, um, unfortunately the way I like Hair to look means that she's. I gotta draw in more than just like these these outliney bits. I know some people tend to do this more in the render, but I like the way the lines look. I think it. You know that uh, film, The Last Unicorn. That's that's sort of the. What it reminds me of, Lady Amalthea's hair. I really liked how they did hair in that film. I don't know. This is sort of why I find streaming games easier, because I actually know what to say. <sighs> uh, okay. 
Okay. I actually, though, I did a sort of like a beginner's guide to Live 2D a while ago, and I really enjoyed that, actually. Doing like a tutorial. That was fun. Um, but it also took nine hours. And that's, that's too many hours. Oops. Um, the, the basic idea of this rig, though, the sort of concept that I went in going, that I thought of going into it, is that, um, first, the arm she has, um, where is it? Here it is. Okay. So, she has one arm that's out and sort of covers this, this breast. And, um, that's going to be the, the, the thing that covers it. That's it. Her hand. I thought it might be interesting to try. Um, and also something I'm doing is... I want to make it so, like, her tattoos glow. They sort of, like, gently pulse. Like, if you look at Rock, her ears twitch. Um, and that's an idle pose that I have going. So the, the idea would be that it would basically, like, flit between the non-glowing version of the arm and the glowing version of the arm. And that way, like... It sort of just radiates magical power because, of course. <laughs> okay. Maybe I should move my camera. <laughs> I don't like how my eyes close every time I actually go to look at my art piece. Does that? That's better. We'll try that. Okay. Um, also you'll notice I sort of used a symmetrical tool to get the basic shape of this hair down, but, um, I still want it to look unique, I don't want it to look too samey-samey, so I'm adding in the individual strands of hair by themselves. Because it's, it's very tempting to use the symmetrical ruler for everything when making a rig. Um, but I think it really takes away from, like, the life that you're trying to, to get into this, you know, basically paper doll, digital paper doll. So, using the symmetrical ruler is, is fine for, like, the head, like, the face, where, you know, things are naturally more symmetrical, but... After the face, things tend to get a lot less symmetrical. And hair... Hair is a mind of its own. It is not imperfect symmetry at all. So, doing all of your hair in perfect symmetry, it can look very neat. But it also looks a little more mechanical, which is not my thing. I also zoom out a lot because, um, you know, it's easy to, 
to look at a thing you're doing up close and think you're doing a good job, but then when you zoom out and you see the bigger picture, it's like, oh heck, what have I done? Um, there's actually a... a tool in Clip Studio that does that for you. It's like a little window you can have open that shows like a zoomed out version of the picture, but actually, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, for some people it's probably helpful, but for... for me, I don't tend to find it helpful. Okay. Um... If I pull up her sketch, the idea is that she's going to have these, like, front bangs come down, but those are still going to be behind the arm. Somehow. I'm going to have to figure out how to do that. Something I have done in the past to get around things like that is, like, I'll lay it over top of the head and then I'll chop it, like, halfway through. And then have that in a layer way farther back. Um, which is actually fine to do because it'll still be one object when you go to like rig it. It's just a matter of making sure things are in the right order you want. Um, sketch. Go away. I'll need you right now. I haven't done a video on, like, this is how you should layer things for 2D, live 2D, and that's essentially because I actually don't feel like I'm the best at it. I always find mistakes and errors and things I could have done better. Um. By the time I get to actually rigging a thing. So I'm like, I don't know if I'm I'm the best person to come to for that. There's probably hundreds of tutorials <laughs> on YouTube already of that specific thing anyway, explaining it much better than I could. So if if you're looking for that kind of action, I recommend you check that out. Mostly, I'm just, I'm doing what my name suggests. I'm just doodling, really. This particular lock is twisting around a lot, and I don't, I don't think I want it to have a, another twist right there that's too pronounced. So we'll try to soften that up using these strands. And see if that works. And if it doesn't, well... The good thing about the hair in the back is that... Unless your character wiggles a lot... Chances are... People aren't gonna see it. That's actually looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. I'm trying to be better with my line variation and to like actually use different line widths for things because I sort of got out of that habit. And I think it's a good habit to try to get back into. Because I think, again, it's one of those things that gives your character a lot of life. Because if everything's sort of, like, flat, it appears flat, you know? Oh, can you hear my dog barking? Not to say that, like, flatline art is bad. It's an aesthetic. It's just not my aesthetic. Or at least, I don't want it to be. <laughs> I 
I also don't tend to use Control Z in Clip Studio. I don't know why. I, it's just never something I I got into the habit of doing. I'll do it all the time in Life 2D, but mostly I just use my history panel. I've set it up to have like the most memory possible. So like, hold on. If I zoom out a little bit, and then I go scroll all the way up in my history panel. Yep, I can literally undo all of the work we've done so far. So, that's sort of what I use more. Because I could sit around just like hitting Control Z for a hundred years after I made a big boo-boo, or I can just <laughs> change the history. Checking this one up. Okay. There we go. Much better. I guess I should probably check to see <laughs> if the stream is okay. I think I forgot to do that. Yeah, okay. Excellent connection. I thought so. It's just I have forgotten to do that in the past. And it's made... It's made issues for me before. I had an entire... Um... Warframe stream... That I... Just... Completely borked. It's basically a PowerPoint now because there's like... I think 20 frames in the whole stream, and um, it's a five hour stream, so five frames a hour? I don't actually, I don't actually math. Okay. Yeah, this is looking good. I think. Like I said, the chances of, especially because this character's got such a floofy skirt, the chances of people seeing this part is pretty low. So I don't really have to be super precious with it, but I like to try to make sure everything's sort of where it needs to be, just in case. I have... I have, in the past... Been like, eh, nobody's gonna see that. I won't even focus on it. And then, oops, is something that's visible in the rig. The hardest part about drawing hair like this is trying to avoid tangents. <laughs> um, making sure that lines in one strand don't sort of lead into the lines of another because if it does it'll look like it's just cutting across and that just isn't good. This hair is going a lot faster than I thought it would, actually. Which is good, because... I don't want to spend too long on it. I still have the whole bangs to do, too. But after that, I think... I'll double-check, but after that, I think this rig is... Rig is ready for the coloring stage. The center point is when I stopped using the symmetrical ruler because if you 
If you try to use the symmetrical ruler at the center of like hair, it's gonna look weird. I guess I could always <laughs> look over at my OBS window to see how it looks from afar. Um. It's probably hard for other people to look at, seeing all the lines, sort of, like all the lines of the different parts intersecting. And I certainly do have it shut off while I'm just filling in a bunch of hair. But I like to keep the parts on generally, because it actually helps me figure out where things need to go. Not gonna lie, I I woke up, I was like, you know what, this seems like a good, good day to do an art stream. And then like, <laughs> the day started to wear on, and I'm like, oh, I don't know, I'm pretty exhausted, then <laughs> I'm already in a lot of pain. <laughs> So, probably not a good idea, but, you know, if it gets too bad, I'll stop. Okay. Um, not bad. Um, hmm. I wonder if you guys would want to see what this used to look like. Hold on. Open. Okay. Because, like I said, this rig is based off of some old art. And there's two older versions. And <laughs> I think the change is very interesting between how it used to be and how it is now. Let's see. Where is it? Um, this is, this is taking a long time to load, it doesn't like it, see? <laughs> okay, um, I also don't remember what it was named. <laughs> Is it even in this folder? Wow. If it isn't, I'm going to feel very silly. I might as well show this. <laughs> um... There's just a bunch of... stuff. Oh, that's Rock's old design. That's cute. Um, might not be in this folder, it might be in an older folder. No, wait, that was it. Well, that was one of them that had her in it. You know what? This isn't actually that important. <laughs> this is me doing it on a whim. The theme of today's stream. I have to say. I used to have a drawing tablet that was, you know, like a, um, it's, it wasn't a monitor tablet, you know? And then I got a monitor tablet and I'm so much happier. There used to be such a disconnect between what was happening with my hand and what was happening on screen, on blah 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 screen. And 
If there are two things that I think really have improved my digital art over the years, she says zooming in and seeing all these little... <sighs> it's... It's having a monitor tablet and... Clip Studio. <laughs> Clip Studio is so good. I used to use Photoshop because that's that's the way I learned to do it, you know? That's the way I was taught to do it. And I used to just think that I didn't enjoy digital art, which was sad, you know? Like, because it's such like a pervasive part of today's society and my life now that like this idea that I would just refuse to do it because I felt like I was bad at it is is ridiculous it's bonkers um and then like clip studio was on sale and I bought it and I have not looked back since I do not regret switching there's so many hundreds of things that are infinitely better about Clip Studio that I'm even still learning about. Like, I'm not doing it right now, but I would like to do my next project using vector layers for my line art and see, like, how that works. Because, firstly, a vector allows you to, like, blow up your line art as big as you need it, and it'll always stay the same resolution. So, no more having to go back in and, like, manually sharpen the lines up again if you need to change the size of something. And <laughs> the vector eraser is so cool. Like, basically what it does is, if you, like, if I, instead of being very careful when I was meeting the edge like that, if I instead, like, just went like this, I could then take the vector eraser and just click on this line, and all this would disappear. All of it would be gone. And then this line would be the only one that stays. Which is, like, really heckin' cool. I can see it making things much faster inking, you know? And it's definitely... I don't even think you can work with vectors in Photoshop. I think that's an illustrator thing, you know? So, that's something I'd like to try soon. Vector layers. Um, recently, Drawfee did, a uh, an episode showcasing Clip Studio, and I was pretty happy. Because I basically never shut up about it. Anybody who, <laughs> who's even remotely interested in art, I'm like, have you heard of Clip Studio? Have you used Clip Studio? Why aren't you currently using Clip Studio? Just because I've had such a good experience with it. Not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to try to make her, her pupils glow as well. Rock actually has a bunch of cool stuff done with her eyes. Um, but she's so big you can't really tell. You can't really see all of her cute little eye physics or anything, which is sad. But, you know, I, m making her, I knew that was, that was a possibility. That it was a likelihood, actually. But, um... She's got little eyelashes that that bounce when she blinks and little sparkles too. Um anytime she looks left or right, her her pupils jiggle. 
because, um, fun fact that that's sort of something that actually happens. If you've ever seen an eye in slow motion, like when you when your eye moves, the whole iris wobbles. So the pupil appears to like distort, which is really cool. So I tried to do that with with Roxreg, and of course, like I said, she's so big nobody can see it. Um, but this is a half reg, and her eyes are a much bigger portion of her face. So likely, when I go to put in all the fancy bits and bobs in this, they'll be visible. Basically, this time I remade Rock, I was like, you know, I've recently joined Twitter, I'm seeing all this cool stuff that people are doing with their rigs. Um, I'm gonna just try out everything. And I basically did. There's a bunch that didn't make the final cut simply because it was too much of a resource drain. Like, um... Her dynamic outline. The idea would be that no matter how she moved, she would have a thick black outline outside of her, um, her main lines, right? But the way I did it was I basically copied each part, filled it completely in black, enlarged it, so it would, like, be haloed around the other part. And then, um, you know, just, like, <laughs> drop them all in the back. Um, the issue therein lay that there were just <laughs> so many parts. Like, I mean, I rigged all of them with the, the main rig it's just after i was done the thing didn't want to save because it would basically get to the textures would be like there are too many of these this is horrible and <laughs> um so i had created a separate texture atlas basically a different picture it was only the outlines and set that to the lowest possible quality and exported it. And I could get it to export then, uh, but the outline was so pixelated and bad looking that I was like, okay, this was something I tried. It didn't work out. It probably would work out really well and like cutely on a chibi rig or like a a smaller, less complicated rig, but... Like, look at how many moving hair pieces Rock has. She's very complicated. Like, each of her upper arms is broken into four different parts, not including the scars and bandages. So, like, there's her deltoids, her armpits, her biceps, and maybe her triceps. <laughs> so I could make it look more realistic when she turned. Like, as you can see, the little scar on her arm, when I turn it, it turns dynamically as well. So that was something fun to try, but unless it's like an important part of your rig, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Um, this ring is rig, blah, blah, blah. This rig that I'm currently working on, like I said, the sort of mechanic I want to try out is like the arm covering a specific spot, no matter how she turns. But also, um, I want to sort of see, like, I'm trying to both simplify and 
and make it a little more complicated than I used to. Basically take the things I learned from Rock and try to apply them, but not apply them too too much so that it doesn't work. There's probably a faster way to do this, but I don't know it. <laughs> yeah, I guess if I get the lines... the lines done today, I'll be happy enough. I don't, I don't know if I'll last that long. I'm already honestly fading and it's already been half an hour. Sometimes the streaming takes my mind off of it and sometimes the streaming just <laughs> amplifies it and I should just go back to bed. This is an amplified day. <laughs> okay. It's actually looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. I don't know if I should try to what I should do in terms of coloring because I have tried to do more painterly looks before I don't know if it's worked out you know um I made a rig out of photographs once that was kind of a nightmare I mean it was fun don't get me wrong but the end result <laughs> Because I basically um, took a bunch of like royalty free photos and stock photos and stuff and mashed them up into a human that didn't exist. And so I guess the best way I could describe it is it sort of looks like one of those search and find games, you know, that sort of art style. Um, but just a little more uncanny valley. It was fun though. There's a lot of rigs that I've done that just... <laughs> is me trying something. But that's sort of the point with Live 2D. Trying what crazy new things you can do. Or even if not crazy, like just trying something new with it for you. I really like the program because I feel like every time I use it I improve. Which isn't always the case. Well, plus, I'm gonna be honest. I've always really enjoyed making dolls, and a rig is really, in essence, even in practice, doll making. Like, it's a paper doll that you then animate to bring to life, you know, whatever you want to bring to life, a game, a movie <laughs> a stream it's just it's just doll making in the 21st century really and I like that like I said I have made a, a number of dolls at this point like literally sculpted them 
which is something I also enjoy. But I know a lot of people are creeped out by the all, so I don't know <laughs> if that's something I'll share online. Because something about Live 2D makes it seem much more alive in general than your typical doll making. And it's that this could be alive but isn't thing, I think, that creeps people out. You know. Is. That's what dead people are. That's literally the reason people don't like dolls and mannequins, because it instinctually, primally reminds some people of <laughs> of corpses. Which, when you think about it that way, it's like, oh, I mean, yeah, I get it. I get why you don't like this thing. But I just think they're cute. Then again, I like clowns, so... <laughs> I don't think I'm really qualified to speak on the creepiness of things. Oof, I'm doing a garbage job on this strand. Okay, let's back it up a bit. Mm -hmm. Rotate. I am rotating less than I might typically because I don't want anybody who watches this to get sick. I know that's a problem for some people. It's definitely looking like hair. <laughs> Pardon me while I stretch. <laughs> okay. Tell you, having to do this on stream is sort of holding me accountable for doing it. So, I'm glad. Because this was not something I was looking forward to doing, because I like how it looks, but it just takes so long, you know? It's, it's definitely one of those things I tend to save for last, just because it's very time-consuming and a lot of repetitive motion. It's not a lot of thinking has to go into it, you know? Sort of a shut-off-your-brain sort of thing. Probably next time I stream, I'm going to be playing a game that I recently discovered I can play. It took a while to get it to work. But, you know, that's how all PS2 games are, basically. And that was, that was my console. Not to say that I played a lot of games on it, but certainly my favorite games were on it. And Okage Shadow King, the game I'm referring to, was definitely one of them, because it's just so... 
It's very unlike a lot of games that I have played, you know? It's very unusual. And in a in a good way. I like it a lot. I think it's considered like a cult favorite. I don't think everybody likes it, but I think it's a game that maybe deserves a little more recognition than it gets. I mean, there's literally hundreds of thousands of games in existence, so nobody's gonna know every game that that's out there. But I think I think a little <laughs> more people at least need to know about it. Cause it's just a good time. Well, and despite not being somebody who's like a music person, I don't really like you know, follow musical artists or listen to music. Um, but for somebody like me who doesn't really like listen to music, I think the music in the game is very good. It's it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, I could listen to this just outside of the game environment. <laughs> You know. Okay. That's the back of the hair done. She's got a nice tangle web of hairs back there. Um, let me see what it looks like with the rest of it. Again, this might be <laughs> confusing for <laughs> some people to look at. It is a big mess of lines, but I don't know. For some reason, I can keep them straight in my head. And it really helps to have a eek -a leak like this. Yeah, I think that looks good. I think putting in the individual hairs, it looks like it's been styled symmetrically, but it is not perfectly symmetrical, which is the point. So, A+. Plus. <laughs> okay. Um, we're gonna beef up my brush a little bit. Just a teeny bit, I think. And then I have to figure out how to make the bangs work. So if we bring in the sketch now as well, um, we have the main sort of bang coming off here. Um, a little noodle coming off the front. So... This part of the bang has to be in front of the face, so it shows up on top of her face, right? But this part down here has to show up behind her arm. The question is, in front of the collar or behind the arm? <laughs> um... Because that'll tell me where I need to chop it if I need to chop it. But for now, I'll remove the back of the hair. And take a gander at my order. The order of things. Okay, so the face is all up here. So I'm going to create a folder that literally is face. Um, and pop all this up in there. So now all that, yep, okay. So all of her head that's done is in there now. So I need it to be in front of this folder. But behind this, which can't work without splitting it, because this has to be behind this, right? Actually, it wouldn't make sense for her hand to be behind her face. 
This should actually be at the very front. This hand and this forearm. But the rest of the arm does have to remain there. And I think... Yeah, okay. So in order for this to work, I'll have to put... I'll have to cut it about here. And then tuck the rest of it to... Probably just the very back. So that's what I'll do. I'll start with it here. And then... Uh... We will cut it. Or... I've cut it in the past. But I don't know if that's the best way to handle it. So I'm gonna draw it up to a certain point. And then I'm going to... Go from there. <laughs> okay. So... Has to cover that part. Of the slicked back hair. Not like that. I'm gonna try to follow the shape a little more closely. Um, if you're having a hard time drawing curves, the best way I've found to do it is to rotate the canvas so, like, I'm right-handed, so naturally my hand makes this sort of half-circle motion in this direction very easily and smoothly, so that's what I, I do. I just rotate the canvas in order to facilitate that sort of motion. So, what does the back of her hair look like? Okay, this is poking out enough. Um, I'll stop to name this right now. Um... Bangs. I think I'm going to just do one sort of bangs chunk this time. Have her hair be a little on the simple side. I can always go back and add more if I think it needs more, you know? And at that point you just rename the layer. That's one part there done. So... Hmm. I think that's actually not a bad place to do the cutoff. in order to make it so. It can show up in the correct layer. So I'll, I'll sort of treat this line as, you know, the stopping point. Um, 
And then I'll get the main sort of hair shaping strands in. Um, and then I'll do the same thing we did with the... back of the hair. What does that look like? It's honestly very fluffy and cute. Yeah, that's cute as heck. I like that a lot. That's a good shape. Um, I'm wondering if I should cut it off there because I think I need this part to be in front of the ear and then this part to go behind the earring, right? So that's where I'm cutting it off. So when physics come into play, this will go behind the earring instead of in front of it. Hmm. So this is the front of the bangs, so we'll call it bangs front. <laughs> um, and leave it like that for a hot second. And then we'll go down here. It's only going to have to be in front of the very back of the hair, so this is bangs back. Now we bring the sketch back in, and we draw in the back. Might have to get a little closer for these to be a seamless transition. As seamless as I can get it anyway. worked out pretty well. Um, now the last one. I might have to... Bring down in front like that. How's that look? Still pretty cute? Okay. I will remove the arm from the equation for a second because it's a lot of lines and stuff and I have to do this hair nope rotate rotate it more How does that look? Huh. Better than I thought it would. Okay. The back of the hair can also be more symmetrical because a lot of it is getting covered by this bang. Something that helps me a lot is my anchor has a pretty powerful stabilizer on it because my hands are quite shaky. Um, sometimes I like the shaky look, but I've discovered when you're doing rigging, the smaller and cleaner your lines are, the better it's 
probably going to look. Probably being the operative word. I've seen some people pull it off very good. Um, excellent even. I just haven't managed to do it. Get that little tail out of there. Fix this little tail up. That's got a lot of dynamicism in it, which is nice. I think it'll look pretty good rigged. <laughs> um. Okay. I need to connect these other ones. Probably add a couple of more main strands in there. That's why we zoom in. That one pixel difference. Uh, I'm really hacking it up. Okay. Otate. That. <laughs> That's one of those things where if I were working on a vector layer, I could just fatten them lines up and not even have to worry about it. Using a tool. But I'm not on a vector layer. Because I didn't think of it when I started the project. see how this is looking. That's a pretty cute shape. I can fatten it up on the bottom. Like this. That's cute as heck. Very <laughs> poofy. Um, now what I'm going to do is just, just for a moment, have this set at 50% opacity. So when I put in these smaller strands up here now, I know where to end them so I can join them down there. Um, Brush smaller again and save. Have I not been saving? <laughs> save constantly, always. Never stop saving. Um, and then I think I'll just have the little warlock squiggle left to do on on this, and it'll basically be done. I'm gonna hide her head <laughs> so I can see better what I'm doing. Oh, that was almost perfect. There we go. I think I need to rotate. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Um, I'm gonna try to add a couple more 
lines in here just because this is the front of her hair and I want it to appear as if it's coming out very thickly here. looking man. Maybe needs a little less parallelism. So, just a couple of hairs tucking into each other. That way it doesn't look too neat and mechanical. Um, let's see what it looks like with that face back in. That's pretty good. It matches this area pretty well. These lines are going to be a little more difficult to connect to the back part, but I'm happy I'm trying it this way because I've tried the splitting method before, and that makes the flats more difficult, the flat colors. So doing it this way, I'll I'll see if that that makes it so there are less errors in the in the color section. This is probably my favorite kind of hair to draw. The kind that's got some texture to it, you know? A little bit of squiggles thrown in. These shapes set up for some very interesting shapes later on. Delicious. That one especially. Because we get a nice little twist in. And twists are important in, <laughs> in this kind of hair. So poofy. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Oof. I am thinking of working on a background soon. The thing is. I'm not great with backgrounds. I don't really enjoy doing them. I, you know, if they come out good, I'm pleased. But it's not a fun process for me. But I'd like, I'd like to make Rock her own little cave for her to hang out in. That's what the the photo slideshow 
on the starting screen is all of my it's basically my mood board for her cave I was just like I don't want to work on this right now what if I what if I incorporate these pictures in a different way Then we can leave that one big. Um. Yes, that's very good. Okay. And now we'll lock that layer. We'll lock that layer. Oh, not working on the hair back. Working on bangs back. That would have been bad. Bring the opacity back up. And now start connecting these. Again, this separation that we're doing is not going to be visible in the final product. There's a lot of... A lot of parts like that in live 2D rigs where it's just, um, you know, separation for the sake of motion. I'll actually leave it that size. I think it's nice to have a little negative space. Whew, I'm fading fast. <laughs> Honestly. It seems like I'll finish the bangs and I will attempt to start getting some flats in here, but for the most part, I might be done soon. Which is unfortunate, but also why I don't stream very often or consistently. Dopey. Pardon me while I readjust some. Oof. So pretty cute. I'll come back to the bottom later. Work on this a little bit. Mm. How's that look? Okay. <laughs> Let's get this twist in. Delicious. Actually, how does this look? Not as good. <laughs>
Pretty good. Okay, so this has to come down here, right? So let me see if that's possible with this. Yes. Perfectly possible. Oops. That looks pretty good. Most of these, uh, lines are gonna be knocked out, <laughs> which sounds weirdly violent, but all, all it means is, um, that instead of being black, I'm going to color them to match the flats better. And that way, there's still the, you know, Blind look, but it's less harsh. Okay, getting pretty close with the hair, which is good. Yeah, it's rough today. I kind of, kind of regret going through with it. That's okay. This is a mistake I shall learn from. There's something strange about the bottom. I think I fatten up the line a bit.
Put in a little bit of extra hair. Might look a little more natural. Let's see. That does look better. Doesn't look as dynamic, but it looks better. From a weight standpoint, you know? Okay. That part's done. Um, now is basically just a little... Just a little curly cue there, and if I want to add a curly cue here, maybe. Maybe I will add one there as well, but I'll add one definitely in the front. Um. Fuck. What does that look like? Pretty cute. Okay, so that's that one. And then the other will be part of this and go just in front of the ear. Oh, that's right. I haven't separated things out into left and right yet. I guess I'll do that after I add flats. So I'm not up for that right now. Um, but if you look, the ears say both of them disappear when I hide this layer. They will need to be separated out. I just haven't, haven't done it yet. Okay. Block side. And I will just put the bangs back so I can see where this should come out. Okay. And then just reform this one. Now I will take it away, so I can actually see what the heck it looks like. Browse to. Okay, that looks good. I think that's all the line art, but let me pop it all in just so I can double check. And then switch back and forth between the sketch a bunch to make sure everything's there. I mean, it looks like it. Okay. So, now I'm going to do some quick flats. Um, these are flats that can be done quickly, as the name implies, uh, because the shapes are closed. So, like, 
You'll see what I mean. Okay. Um, let's hide all of these. You know what? I think I do have to open up. Open. Um, not that. Art. I think I have to find the color reference for this character. Because I don't remember. It's... My brain isn't doing a good job helping me remember what I'm supposed to be remembering. So... Let me see if I can pull it up. If it's in this folder, it might not be. might be in an older folder. I think it is. Okay. In this one called Old. <laughs> um... Nope, I have no idea where it is. Why can't I find this? Am I just not seeing it? Is my brain really that bad? I guess it is. <laughs> oh, there it is. Jeez, I bet you somebody... Somebody who sees this is going to be screaming the whole time. It's right there! Okay. This is, um, her second design. Because her first design was pretty jank. Um, but this was one I based this rig off of. Um,. The layers are an absolute mess in this, but if I turn it all off, I can get what I originally intended the flat colors to look like anyway. Whoops, that was the line art. Um, whether or not I keep them this color, I'll probably be adjusting them, but... I mean, it's actually not a bad color palette. Um... It's hard to be pink and green, honestly. Wait, I'm coloring her hair. Don't be dumb. <laughs> um... Here we go. Okay, so... First, we have to create a folder, and you really want to make sure if you're rigging that the folders are named properly, because you can literally just merge everything in the folder into the folder name. So when you basically flatten all this in order to import it into Live 2D. <laughs> um... It's all named correctly. Okay. So, something else we're gonna do is unlock it, and then we're gonna hit this thing that's called Lock Transparent Pixels. Um, for a reason that will become apparent soon. Uh, and then on the line art layer, you select everything that is supposed to be transparent. Expand your selected area. How much do I want to expand that? Let's try, let's try two pixels. Because it's, it's hair. Okay, no. I forgot the canvas size I was working on. Um, let's undo that. The reason you're expanding your selected area is so the colors are hidden under the line art. 
So let's try five. That might cut in in a couple of places, but it shouldn't be too bad. Then we create a new layer called flats, because these are the flat colors. Just fill it in. Ooh, boom. Um, I might not actually have to do a knockout, because her hair is so dark. But let's try it. So I'll lock that layer. Now I'm going to start a palette layer. And grab my flatter, which is a brush I use for flatting things that aren't easy to flat. And I use it because it... Um, if we zoom in... It's got no anti-aliasing whatsoever. So when I select something like this, I don't even have to have the tolerance or the basically the allowance that the magic wand lets the colors not exactly match. I don't even need to have that on because I can just select it and know that it'll select everything that that's that is that color. Anyway, um, so if this is going to be the hair color, we'll write hair in this color. And then we'll open the color mixer and select a darker shade of it. I want it to be a little warmer, so I'm putting in more red and yellow, or magenta and yellow than cyan, because I use CMYK. Um, and then we go back down to the hair back layer, and because we've locked the transparent pixels, I can just hit the fill bucket. And it instantly colored all the line art to be that color. Now obviously this this color is too light. It's also a little too warm. So I'm going to turn the blues back up. And try this. That's much better and it's not pure black. So it it still manages to have a softer look. So now I am going to lock that back up. As you can see, the lock transparent pixel set. <laughs> lock transparent pixels thing is still on. Um, and then I'm going to go back up to my palette layer. And next to hair, in the color I use for the lines, just write lines. <laughs> And that's, that's how I arrange my palettes. So I can just tell at a glance, oh, that's the color I use for the hair, and that's the color I use for the lines in the hair. <laughs> um. Okay. So, that was easily done. What about the bangs? These, this is open, so if I tried to use the same method of flatting that I just did, um... Oh, pardon me. Oof, that hurt. <laughs> Ow. If I tried to use the same method, um, all of these parts would not be selected properly and it would look horrible. Um... This is in several parts, so let's see if any of these parts are standalone. So that one is. That one isn't. And that one also isn't. So I can color the upper arm anyway. So I'll create the new folder. Upper arm. Pop that in there. Select it. 
Expand. And then invert the selected area so it's selecting the correct thing. Create a new flat layer. Um, and then this is the color I had for the arms, but you can see what I mean by like chunky line art in this piece, right? It's very chunky, kind of shaky, and that could probably work in regging. It just traditionally has not worked for me. <laughs> probably because I'm not very good at it. <laughs> um, I actually quite like that color. Um... So that's the flat, so we'll lock that, go up to palette, and this is the jacket color, so that's what we'll write it as. Jacket. Lock it back up. And then we'll pick a knockout color for this. We want it to be still obviously pink, but maybe with a hint more orange in it. And then of course you have to kick that up just to make it darker, same there. I think that's got it in one, lads. Okay. So that's what we'll do. So, flatting is, is a pretty tedious process, but it's also when you get to decide, you know, all your color stuff, so that's pretty fun. Um, that's all we can do of that for now, because I don't feel like flatting the hard way right now. Skirt back. That is a contained shape. So that's getting flatted. Here we go. Um. Skirt back. Okay. New folder. I probably could come up with like an auto action to do this. Um, but honestly, I don't know how you would reliably select. Oops, sorry. I don't know how you would reliably select outside of the thing you wanted to flat, unless you did that and then executed the auto action. But. You you also sort of have to change how, depending on the size of your lines in the piece, you have to change the um, amount you expand the selected area by. Okay, so that's skirt. And of course, because... I'm using my flatter for this. I can change this pretty easily if this changes. And now the knockout. I used to not use knockout because it took a long time to try to do in Photoshop, and you almost could never get rid of all of, like, the black of your line art. There'd always be a little bit hanging out on the edge, just because I didn't know how, how to use Photoshop, I guess. Um, but I know how to use Clip Studio. Okay. So... Add in the lines. Uh, 
Okay, so that was the skirt back. Oh, probably. Where's the skirt front? There's the skirt front right there. Hips. That's not self contained. Skirt front. That's not self contained. Neck. That's self contained. Yeah, Rock's neck was very complicated. So there's the sternoclavomastoid, which is a fancy way of saying the muscle that goes from behind the ear and then connects at the collarbone, right? So there were those, and then the base of the neck itself, and then the collarbones themselves, and then the traps, which are the big neck back muscles, right? So she had a lot going on, whereas this neck is just a little tic-tac. <laughs> it's a little tic-tac with lines on it. So, heart separation really depends on sort of the aesthetic you're going for, or how complicated you're going for. The, definitely the more muscles you have, the, the more you have to separate things out. Okay. Because, you know, muscles all move differently. Like, they push and pull against each other. So when you have them just like, sort of flopping around all over the place, it doesn't quite look right. Um, I forgot to select the color. There we go. Ooh, that's a good color. Um, I do have to warn you. As per usual, technology is a little racist, um, and any time you try to import a model that is high resolution with dark skin into, like, VTube Studio, you're gonna have weird white lines that are visible. Luckily, they have a way of fixing that. You just hit click, you just click fix white outlines and um it gets rid of them but um i guess i didn't save soon enough because it's it's like oh i'm saving now um if you look at rock's arm on the screen there's a slight white outline where the hand and the arm meet, and that's because it's a high-resolution picture with dark skin, and for some reason, technology is racist, so there's a white line, and I don't know how to get rid of it myself, so it's just there for now. <laughs> Come on. Okay, thank you. Um, unfortunately, I hit save at exactly the same time. It was like, oh, it's been 15 minutes and you haven't saved. So that's what that was. Generally, when I'm on my own, I save all the heckin' time. But it does slow down the process quite a bit, so I haven't been doing it. Um, skin. Um, and now let's figure out what color we want to do for the knockout. Obviously it needs to be warm. Don't want it to be too yellow. Because that looks a little more sickly than I think I want her to look. Um... How's that? That's a little too light. It's not clearly defined. Let's try it back. Almost perfect. Actually, that's just perfect. Okay. So, we'll go up to the palette and put that in.
and do a save. Okay. So what does the torso look like? The torso, I actually went in closed up. That was smart of me. Thank you, past me. Torso. So, I will, you will see some of what more complicated cladding looks like because obviously there are several colors that have to happen here. But I can just start out doing the select, expand, invert, fill. Whoops, I did the fill on the line layer. Fill. Thank you. Um, and then you just select it up again. And select a color. And then what I do, some people, you can use the lasso to do this. You would just deselect anything outside the area you want to color. But I just take my flatter, run along the line. And then, because these are no longer connected, they're no longer the same color, I can just go ahead and select that section, fill it up, and bam! That's a flat bun. Um, let's see. So I need the top color, which is this light green. Which I don't know if I like, but we'll see. And I'll just go ahead and separate both of these areas out while I'm at it. So, like that. Whoops. that and then select that back up again it's important that you deselect and then select it back up so you have your initial line selected in there as well grab this I actually do like that green color I've decided so I will go add it to the palette after I do this and then see all I have to do is this part because it's already separated from the other colors now if that's we can, if I've been making any sense in the past hour, I will be completely surprised. I will be unendingly surprised. I will never stop being surprised. Okay. And then go up to palette. This is the waistband, so I'll just call it waist. And then I'll select this and call it top and now we have to do knockout but for several things so what we do is we first select our first knockout color and do what we've done all those other times just fill it in now we select our second one and just select the lines we want to color using our lasso oops Gonna smooth this out a little bit. Okay. And then once you have that selected, you just hit the fill bucket again. And bam! 
is the correct color. Now we have to come up with the top knockout. So we're going to try put a little more blue in there. Bump up that just a wee bit. Um, whenever you're darkening colors, you almost never just want to add a bunch of black to it. Because adding a bunch of black to it makes it look very stagnant. That's, that's sort of one of the first rules of rendering you learn about color theory. So, as little of that as you can add to it is great. So now we're going to fill that, pull back a bit and see if we like it. I think it's a little blue, so I'm going to bump up the yellow just a little bit and bump up the red just a little bit. That's cute. Okay. So we can go ahead and deselect that and add that to our palette now. Um, and even if that's the only spot where you're going to use that color, it's still a good idea to add it to your palette because um, you might want to develop like accessories that are that color or, um, you know, change that color. I don't know. It's just a good idea to leave yourself options. Okay, so let's select that color. Darken it up. And see how it looks. And then we zoom in pretty close there because it's a delicate area with a lot of lines in there. Okay. How does that look? You can also, this lets you hide it while keeping it still selected. Um, this little button up here. Which can be useful if the little marching ants are getting in your way. Um, I think that might be a little too yellow. I'm gonna bring it down some and color it in. And I think it needs to be a little darker. There we go. I think that's good. So we'll lock the torso because we're done there for now. Don't forget to deselect. It can be easy to do if you've hidden your lines. Or your ants. But yeah, like, um, the leaf in Rock's hair, the oak leaf, um, that's the color that I selected to use for the mushroom background. So, you know, that's another reason to save the colors so you can, like I said, make accessories and things. Um, and when the flats start coming in is when you can start seeing things 
looking like they're meant to look. You know? That's not closed. The breasts aren't closed. Collar is not closed. There's a lot of stuff on the face that is closed. Um... But to be honest... <laughs> to be honest... I think I might be done. <laughs> For now, anyway. Um... Made a decent amount of progress. Oops. And of course, flats allow you to see things like this thing that should be in front of the torso is not. So, um, the hips and the skirt front have to be there. Whoops, I dropped them into the torso thing when I wanted to put them above. Just there, see? Now the bend in her waist is actually visible. Chances are you're not going to get everything in the correct order you need it right off the bat. But this is getting to be around the time where you can determine that, you know? Yeah, so I think she's looking pretty good. So we'll go ahead and close this. Do not save. I can grab the other colors if I need to, but I think for the most part it's just gold and red, and I don't even know if red is going to be the color I want to choose for that. It might be. Red works very well with both pink and green, because pink is just watered down red, and green is its complementary, so... Maybe it'll stay that way. I don't really know. But yeah. I'm... I'm pretty pooped, so I think... whoops. Arms back up. I, for, I didn't make arms down for her, so when I remove her arms, they, they're just nubs. <laughs> I, I forgot that was something I would need. Um, but yeah, I'm done for now. <laughs> um, so... Thanks for watching, and... Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, I'll try to be more responsible streaming and not stream when I'm <laughs> tired as heck and hurting. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Um, thanks for coming and I hope you guys have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.